Hello, today we have a demonstration video of a MS Day 6AL2 programmable ignition box. Uh, this is the programmable version um, which allows me to take advantage of the control software on a regular laptop to uh, do retard curves and uh, advance vacuum vacuum and boost advanced curves and uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, how this system works and uh, how the MSD system works in general uh, we have it hooked up to a older ProMaster coil with a uh, wrench for the spark plug and we're going to be looking at the MSD signal on a Tektronics oscilloscope so um, Basically, I have it set up, run off the power supply, and I have a test lead and this little knurled metal piece simulating points. And as you can see, if I scratch it on it, you'll see sparks. I don't know if they come out real well. You can hear it, and on the computer here. Well, <laughs> just zap the computer. That happens every once in a while. But uh, what's really neat is an MSD system fires multiple sparks at uh, every time the points close, or every time it receives a, a trigger signal from uh, from your ignition system, and uh, it's really cool to look at on a scope. as you can see each time it fires there's actually a square wave a set of square wave pulses and that's coming off the primary that's coming out the ignition box so it's firing the coil uh, a bunch of times I have, a, I have the scope set to two milliseconds per division each one of those square waves about a half a millisecond, so probably one millisecond duration on that spark. And I don't know, a couple of them, not more than ten, maybe five or six, and now a little ringing at the end. So that's that's how the MSD system works, and so it's actually it actually does fire multiple times. Now I don't know at what RPM it goes up to. I've been told that they act like conventional ignition after they get up to 3000 RPM. And I don't really have a, a signal generator to trigger that this point set up quick enough. If I had a, a square wave generator I could set it to trigger at whatever RPM I wanted. But uh, this MSD is pretty neat because you don't have to have a, a vacuum uh, advance or mechanical advance on your distributor. You can just lock it in and uh, do all the tuning with uh, with the laptop here. So I'm going to open up the ProData software here. Select our COM port. In this case it's five and there's all the goodies so this screen here is for our regular advanced curve and they call it a retard curve and the bottom screen is for the boost reference curve that you can set with the with the map sensor here I actually have a an old school regular GM three bar map sensor plugs right in um, this little gauge window this window here is our data editor this allows us to set the number of cylinders and uh, the rev limiters 
you have a burnout rev limiter, a maximum rev limit, and a launch rev limiter. And those are activated by a couple different wires on the harness. Um, we have the setup for the map sensor and uh, a couple little alerts we can set up in case uh, something goes wrong. So it's pretty nice, pretty nice setup. Here's our monitor. It tells us right now atmospheric pressure is 13.25 pounds absolute. So that's different than PSI G, which would be what a boost gauge reads. That's gauge pounds uh, is in reference to the current barometric pressure. And map sensors read differently. They read the pressure of the air in relation to sea level or absolute pressure. So right now I'm at 13.25 uh, pounds atmospheric or absolute pressure. And uh, the graphs come in that scale. So it's a little bit of a pain to convert to actual uh, boost pounds or vacuum inches as we think of it. But with a little math you can do it. Another thing is this is primarily made for like boosted cars so that's why they say oh run retard curve and 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 the boost retard curve uh, in reality um, how you would set it with a naturally aspirated car is you'd set the distributor up to the maximum amount of advance you'd ever want the engine to see so you'd lock the distributor in and set it on the car at say 30 or 40 degrees depending on how much really how much total advance you'd want on the car and then once you hook up this uh, 6AL2 um, you would program it to pull timing out um, and you'd start at idle or zero RPM and then pull timing out or add it or whatever the graph wants so you're actually subtracting degrees you're not advancing so you set the distributor at the maximum and then the box pulls pulls the advance. So it's a little bit backwards thinking but um, some pretty good results can come of it especially with almost almost infinite amount of adjustability as far as timing is concerned. So uh, this is pretty much the best you can get without going to like a seven unit you know drag unit. <laughs> Those are uh, a little bit beyond the price range of the average car hobbyist. So I'm going to take a few more uh, See if the spark will come out cleanly. That's impressive, I think. If it puts out a wallop of a spark, I wouldn't want to touch it. Actually, uh, I'll take the wrench off here. I'll put an alligator clip on. and we can space it space the alligator clip quite a ways away from the uh, primary terminal wow quite a hot spark if I do it enough it'll start to melt the plastic on the ProMaster um, this is an old one but uh, oil filled unit but you can see here the primary voltage I have it set um, 100 volts a division so here it is I don't know 150 175 volts it's qu quite a bit less than the 300 they uh, quote from the from the sales literature but I'm not sure if it's because I'm using a different coil or uh, maybe an MSD coil now this is primary voltage we're talking about so it's not it's not the outputs which should be like 50,000 or so uh, still 150 volts on the primary of this coil it's putting out a wallop of a spark and there it just shut down my computer again this is uh, unfortunately it's programmed with a serial port so you gotta have a USB to serial adapter I have this old Belkin unit but uh, they can be had on the on eBay on the internet really cheap under five bucks look for the 
ones with the prolific chipset, the prolific, prolific, and uh, they work with most new operating systems, Windows 7, 8, no problem. So I wouldn't spend more than five bucks on them. Impressive. That is fun. Alright guys, thanks for watching.